Welcome back our viewers. We are on the part two of the testimony of Pastor Nicholas Lucesi. Like I have always said, behind every saint there is a story. When you see a servant of God standing, they did not just rise up and become who they are or where they are. They, there is a journey, there is a story of what they have gone through and what they have passed through. And um, last, in our last episode, uh, Pastor Nicholas was just uh, telling us about his life. He is at the point of life where he is now completely lost into the world. He is uh, addicted to pornography, but also apart from that, he is living a life that he is not really himself. And he gets to a part where he wants to be rich and become wealthy. And the only option and the solution that he gets in his head is that he needs to, do, to join devil worshipping or illuminati in order to get money and become wealthy and one day he even goes to the to one of the a freemason uh, launch and he's told that he thinks that's one of the ways to become rich when he gets there and he realizes the kind of vehicles that are parked outside and for him he came walking he cannot even qualify to get in there so he goes back he's going to take us now through from that point on welcome back pastor nicholas thank you you have gone now to the illuminati place it was freemason lounge yeah i had gone i had tried to join freemason but uh as i told you i couldn't manage because i was on food so <laughs> i started looking for other means of joining a similar cult mm -hmm. so i get this friend who was working in a, an, a hardware in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. who tells me, I know I have an uncle who was working as a Mijenko person. These people in the construction site, not as a fundi, just a person, uh, you know, helping the, the const contractors. And uh, he joined and now he has flats. He has got cars. He changes X-ray, what, what. And that was what I wanted. You said yes. I said yes. That's my man. That's it. So he told him, when can you take me there? I was willing even to go that very day. But he told me now, uh, because of my work schedule, because he was working uh, in the hardware, he told me, uh, okay, the place was in Kitengela. And he told me it was a posh place with glass everywhere, you know, nice place. And that is where I wanted to be at that moment. So we agreed that he was going to take me there on a Sunday. And... Um, uh, unfortunately, I had everything ready. I was actually to pay for his fare, everything. I was willing to foot the bills. But uh, that same day, the, on that Saturday, he was sacked and uh, his phone confiscated and um, uh, that was the end of my contact with him. I really cried because I, I saw my dreams had just been crushed. crushed yes. <laughs> so I decided now I was no longer going to look for people to help me to get into that stuff. I was going to start my own. I said I was going to start my own cult. So because I was staying, at that moment, my, the two sisters who were, uh, they would, uh, they, there was a time they had requested to leave my house, they were traveling. So I decided I would use that time now to establish, to start now uh, the foundation for my cult. I would lock myself in that house, make sure that the curtains are all drawn, and now I'm inside in secrecy. I will sit on the floor, try to turn things and try to imagine things happening. You know, like, like I wanted to start something. I thought if, I, if something happens, mm -hmm. then I will introduce, I will now start bringing people into this cult and I will be the one being worshipped. That's the, the, the senior, senior in that cult. Mm -hmm. And I would try everything, I would try everything, and it wasn't working. One day, as a, uh, these girls came back, and they were praying again. And it was in the middle of the night. I was, actually, I was very tired, and I had slept early. So while I was, I was dead asleep, I heard like, a voice was speaking to me and was calling me, Nicholas, you have to, you have to serve me. And you have to stop these things you are doing. But I said no. I had a slap. I received a slap. Mm. Yes, in the, in the sleep. I cannot describe it so well, but it was so vivid I can remember up to now. I cried loudly to a point that the girls who were on the other side, they were in a room on the far end of the, room, the house. They heard the cry. They, it was a serious cry. They came running and they, came, they started knocking at my door. It was bro, a slap. Bro, 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 bro. Yeah. Yes. Bro, 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 bro. What is it? What is it? 
I said, go away, I don't want to be disturbed. What is it? Why are you looking for me in the middle of the night? But we have, we had, we just had you crying. What is it? I, I rebuked them and chased them away. So they went, but I knew, I, at that moment I knew God wanted me to, to join ministry, but I was, I was resisting. Mine was so much into wealth. I wanted wealth. I wanted uh, cars, houses. Those are the things I wanted. And I thought working for God would not take me there. I wanted shortcuts in life. So uh, this guy now is gone. I tried to join my own, my, to start my own cult. It's not working. So I, I said, I've heard a lot about uh, uh, Zanzibar and how uh, there's these powerful witches there. Why can't I just go? Go there and get these powers so that I can quickly make it mm. through either my cult or get the money mm. through this witchcraft. So I decided, now, how am I going to connect to, to Zanzibar? I thought the, the best way was for me to go to Mombasa. And then once I'm in Mombasa, I try to find a vessel that goes to Zanzibar or find a way of how I can get there. And that's what I did. I had some money in, in my pocket, but it wasn't enough according to my standards. Mm. So I went, I booked a bus, bought a new line because I didn't want people to track me, bought a new line, and then I went down to the coast. And when I went to the coast, I came to Mombasa. That was my second time to be in Mombasa, but uh, this time round on a serious mission on transition, yes. on transit to, to Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Yes, to, to look buy for, witchcraft. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I am on my way. I'm going to Zanzibar, and I come to Mombasa. When I landed in Mombasa, because I was not familiar with Mombasa, mm -hmm. so I, I, there's this, there are these guys that, who hang around idol in Mombasa. When they see a stranger, they want to help you around. The tejas. They want to help you around at some fee. Mm. So there's this one who came and started helping me around, take me around. So I, in fact, he just requested his fee was for me to buy him breakfast, which I did. Mm. Uh, and then he started taking me around, telling me a lot about Mombasa. I, I requested him to show me where I can book a vessel. So he took me to the ferry side. And uh, I looked, I couldn't see the vessels. So I started just walking around the ferry place there. I saw there was um, around Mamangina before they converted into, upgraded into whatever mm. is now mm. there. It was just a, you know, a place where people would just walk in, mm. you know. So I was walking around there and I saw there was a, a choir that was shooting. I went and I looked at that and uh, something happened at that moment. When I, I saw those people, they, there was a choir that was trying to shoot a video. I looked at them and something was happening. It's like I was getting attracted to these godly things mm. and yet I'm going to Zanzibar. Mm. And uh, you know, it was not like going the way I wanted. At that moment, because I, I'm on a new line, no one can get me. Mm. No one had my number, my mm. new line. But I decided to, something just started telling me, call your sister, Grace. Grace was uh, living in Mutuapa at that time. Mm. Uh, she had been, we had not met for over two years at that moment. So. Uh, I decided to call her. So I called her because it was a new number. She asked me, who is this? I said, it's me. Where are you? I, I tell her, I am in, I'm at the ferry. She said, oh, bro, if you are at the ferry, please, 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 if you love me as your sister, please just come. Come even if it is for... I told her, I am in a hurry. There's a place I'm rushing right now. Mm -hmm. She said, no, you can't go. Please come. Just even if it is just for an hour. Because the vehicles that come to Mutuapa are just there where you are. Mm. Okay, I, I gave in actually. Mm. I bought it one of the matatus to Mutuapa. And that is how I came to Mutuapa. Mm -hmm. Then I came, she received me. She mm. took me to her small uh, room where she was, mm. where she was staying. And she, was, she started talking a lot about, you know, she was excited. She's telling, she thought I was a, a Christian at that moment. <laughs> so she's telling me a lot about things of God and I'm not interested, but she keeps on telling me more and more and more. And uh, she tells me a lot about her, her pastor and her church, how she loves her church, how the, her church is so good. And I'm like, what is this girl telling me? <laughs> I'm not so interested. And she kept on and uh, she said, okay, because you have come to Mombasa and you have never been to the beach. Please, don't rush. This, I, I beg that you postpone this trip of yours, which you are saying you are so much in a hurry. Mm. You postpone it until at least I take you to the beach. Mm. Uh, we have one just here in Mutuapa. Mm. I can take you to the beach 
and we will pass just right at our church. I will show you where our church is. Mm. And I'm not interested, you know, the things of the church. Actually, I remember when those girls, the two girls who were staying at my place, used to come to my place, uh, stay to my place. I had so many Bibles actually in the house, but all these Bibles, I would leave them in different churches. Every time I go to a church, I would feel uh, disconnected, disoriented. I would leave the Bible there so that the usher would think I'm coming back and I would go and I would never come back. Aww. So all those Bibles, many Bibles I had left in churches. I never wanted to be in, in anybody's church. Mm. So this time my sister is now want, wants to show me the church. So the route that goes to the beach passes by the church. Mm -hmm. So we leave the house. Mm. It was uh, around 12. We are passing and uh, we come just close to the church. And the pastor of my sister had just arrived there with, with uh, his wife. So they had just parked the car outside the church. And, they, and uh, my sister said, no. I, in fact, the past, my pastor is just here. Now, please. Let us just go, because we are already here. Let us go and say hi to our pastor. And I said, no, I'm not interested. I'm going to the beach. I'm not going to the church. But she insisted. She insisted, please, please, bro, if you love me, please, let's go. And the pastor was calling, was beckoning, like uh, calling her, mm. and uh, was inviting us to go to the church. And uh, I had to. You had no choice. I had no choice. Yes. After a lot of resistance, mm -hmm. I told you, you go. She, had, she was in the company of another girl. You go. Uh, you find me here. But she, they, she insisted, so I had to go. And that is how I met the man of God, Apostle Fred, for the first time. And you. And that's Reverend the person you're talking about? Yes. <laughs> you almost confused me. <laughs> you, are, you are actually the pastor <laughs> and, oh, okay. the, and the wife wow. who are there. And that, is the first, that. <laughs> that is the first time yes. I saw you. And that was in August 2012. Yes. Wow. All right. Now, uh -huh. I have, yeah. now I have met the pastor and, uh, and uh, his wife. And uh, my sister is talking a lot about. And the funny thing, uh, when I met this uh, man of God, uh, he seemed to be very familiar with me. And he's told me that there's something that God is showing him about me. I was like, I've never met this man of God. How would God be showing him things about me? Yes. So that really, you know, struck me. I got interested. You mean God? God is still interested in this man who wants to go to Zanzibar. Man going to buy witchcraft. God is interested in that man. You know, that struck me somehow. Mm -hmm. So the man of God told me, please don't go before you see me. And now that was a reason for me not to quickly move with yes. the journey. So I proceeded to the beach. Uh, my sister went, showed me the beach at uh, Tuapa, the other side. Mm. Yeah, and I went. Uh, I was, you know, thinking about the, the way things were, had unfolded mm -hmm. and how the man of God said God wanted, had something mm -hmm. concerning me. Mm. And, uh, well, I went back to my sisters and my mind was changing. Something was happening. Even before the man of God prayed for me, mm. something was happening. Mm. I would now connect the various uh, uh, times that God had tried to bring me closer to him, but mm. I had resisted. Mm. And I knew this was another opportunity. Yes. But I wasn't really, I was still not so sure why God would be interested in such a person, an evil person like me, mm. a dirty person. I had a dirty mind, mm. ma'am. Mm. I would see girls from afar and I would, I would you know, mm. I was so spoiled. Mm. And, uh, but God was still interested in me. So I went back to my sister's place. I stayed there. And the following day, I went to see the man of God. Man of God pray, uh, prayed for me. Actually, he's the one who prayed. He's my spiritual father because he's the one who prayed for me to receive Christ again. Amen. And uh, uh, he told me a lot about things of God. Mm. He told me a lot about things of God. And uh, I wanted, after he prayed for me, and he told me something because, you know, uh, the reason why I wanted to go to Pempa, my reasons were that I, I wanted to be rich. I wanted money. Mm. I had tried to get a job, as I told you, the guy was mm. just taking me round and round in circles and I got frustrated. Mm. I had tried to apply for jobs locally and it still wasn't working, so I wanted shortcuts now. But uh, the man of God told me that uh, God had shown him, even if I were to get a job, 
I would do it for a while and it wouldn't help me. And uh, because God had just called me into ministry and God wanted to, to use me in ministry and to help me through ministry. And uh, it's something that struck me uh, that God would be interested in such an evil person like me. And I decided to give my life to Christ. Wow. So I gave my life to Christ in 2012, August. Wow. And uh, God started taking me through a journey. Mm -hmm. While I was there, the man of God, I had never met a man of God who was so much into prayer. Mm -hmm. A man of God whom God would, I had never seen a deliverance mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. I had never seen God uh, like uh, use a man of God to deliver people. Mm -hmm. That was my first time. So I was seeing God in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it really touched me. Wow. I knew I was somewhere different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, in fact, for many times, for many years, I used to call that place Shiloh, mm. uh, the Mutuapa place. Mm. And because of, it had a, a special place in my heart mm. in how it connected me with God. Mm. So, that's, I have given my life to Christ now. And uh, still in my heart, I wanted to know this God more. The man of God introduced me to a prayer. I had never fasted in my life. I, I even didn't know what fasting was. Mm -hmm. The man of God introduced me to prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to take, we, to take it and run with, away with it, mm -hmm. the fasting thing, and mm -hmm. see how God works through that. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, uh, I went, while I was still at my sister's place, mm -hmm. I now, uh, something developed in me after I, he prayed for me, and I wanted to know God more. And I wanted to know, surely, is this God? really who I have done so many evil stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and uh, God still loves me. He's interested in me. So mm -hmm. I went into prayer for some time. I, I remember there's a time I went for four days mm -hmm. for the first time mm -hmm. in my life. I fasted for four days dry, wow. no water, no nothing. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know God. And I was my, my theme for that particular time was just God, mm -hmm. me, so you ch you chosen me and the man of God has said ministry, mm. me, ministry, you know, that those were the kind of questions I, was, I just wanted God to clarify. Yes. And God is faithful. Yes. God spoke to me in an audible voice mm. and even showed me a very open thing that has remained a landmark in my walk with Christ. Every time I remember that I know there's God and God really called me into ministry and God wanted me into ministry. Mm. I don't want to go into details about this. But uh, the truth of the matter is God showed me something very visible and he proved beyond reasonable doubt that he had called me. Mm -hmm. Because he showed me something while I was in my sister's house during the prayer session, during that fasting session. He showed me something and uh, he told me, go. Just outside Lambada, the, this, these things I've shown you, go and you will find them. Because I was asking God, prove, prove to me that surely me, me, the evil person going to Zanzibar, has mm. been called into ministry. Mm. And God showed me. He confirmed he it. He confirmed it. Praise it was a confirmation. God. Amen. And when I went, I found exactly what God had shown me in my, in my house in a vision. I saw it physically, now in, in the physical, and I believed in him. Wow. Praise and God. that has set a foundation in my walk with God. Mm. I believe him. I don't, wow. try, I don't uh, doubt mm. That Even if God I really call me. Yes, yeah. because uh, he has proven. Okay, there are times I, I would have some thoughts, but every time I would remember that, I would say there is God. There is God. Yes, and he is interested in my case. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it really played an important role in uh, strengthening my faith. Mm -hmm. And because the man of God really, was, he took me like a son, mm -hmm. and I don't know the connection, but mm -hmm. the man of God just brought me closer. And that is what was missing in my life. Mm -hmm. I was just a lone ranger, mm. a man who looked like he had been forgotten. Mm. At, at some point, I struggled with self-esteem issues. Mm. And um, this man of God just accepted me from nowhere. Mm. He brought me closer, mm. closer, mm. you know, closer. And he would encourage me more and more. Mm. And um, through his encouragement, I started developing confidence. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, he brought me closer. In fact, he got the, uh, a little bit later, a few months later, he even took me. There were many people in the church, but the man of God had brought me closer. Mm -hmm. And he even uh, took me to Nairobi mm -hmm. to receive important guests. Wow. And uh, for the first time, I went into a five-star, seven-star seven -star hotel. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I was working with high profile people mm. and that was something wow. it was something yes yes and yes. for I would walk with them everywhere in Nairobi in different missions and mm. people respected me because they thought through me they can get connection to these people yes. you know I was an important person at that moment yes and I felt you God. became important again, yes. like the professor. Like God, <laughs> like God had remembered me. Yes. I felt wow. like God had remembered me through the ministry. Amen. And I started loving uh, just being closer to God. But uh, as I've mentioned, that issue of looking for money, and there was also some pressure coming from home mm. because the, I was among the elder people in the, uh, in the family, family uh, who, was, who were uh, privileged to go to school to school so they wanted me to get a job so that I would help my younger siblings mm -hmm. uh, so there was that kind of pressure and they, they you know they were not so settled in uh, issue of ministry because they thought ministry would not take me where they they wanted me to be mm -hmm. but uh, by God's grace God is faithful I, I stood firm by the encouragement of the man of God but uh, in uh, November mm -hmm. of the same year 2012 the man of God was to travel to the UK and uh, he called me and told me, Nicholas, I'm traveling to the UK, but remain here. Mm. I don't know. I think the Spirit of God had revealed to him that I, I, would, I, I was not strong enough to remain after he mm. traveled. And indeed, when he traveled, I received a call from the, that ambassador friend. He wanted me to do a project in mm. construction mm. Uh, in Mihango again, mm. so, which I accepted. The man of God had gone to, to UK. Mm. So I accepted the honor. And you are also in the UK, ma'am, mm. at that moment. So I accepted the one. I went, I went back to Nairobi, and then again I started going down mm -hmm. because I went to the to the issue of construction. I started well. I would pray for the workers when mm. they come. Now I changed <laughs> man. But uh, after I finished my first project, he gave me another project. I was working with a certain uh, architect. Mm. Uh, so through that, uh, he gave me a bigger project to work on which would take more, more months mm -hmm. and I was getting money mm -hmm. and the interest of money now over, you know, overtook mm -hmm. the interest of ministry as the man of God had directed me to. Mm -hmm. So I started, I, uh, the man of God came back mm -hmm. while I was in, busy in the issue of the con construction. Mm -hmm. I had even started some businesses there in Nairobi and I was like, man of God, you know, I, he called, where are you, Nico? I said, oh, daddy, you know, I went back. I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to get some money so that I would support my ministry there. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm just finishing. But then the funny thing is that every time I would... Uh, I'll finish a project, I'll get another project, and money was coming in. I was actually getting money, lots of money. I started some businesses, car wash, I started a fish uh, shop, I started um, uh, a hotel, mm -hmm. a small restaurant, and uh, I was d getting money, and I was doing uh, some construction work, mm -hmm. and I knew how to really take my work as fast so that I would get money mm -hmm. for myself. They do a lot of work, then the extra money that they would have worked for another day would be mine. So oh, I was exploiting wow. them mm. <laughs> and I would get a lot of money. But the funny thing is that the money wasn't helping me. Mm -hmm. So I had left in November of uh, 2012 and uh, for about uh, eight months I was in Nairobi. And during that time I was interacting with lots of money, but the money wasn't helping me. I had over 12 workers, including my own family members. I would pay them, I would pay my workers, but for me I had nothing for myself. Mm. The workers, oh, somebody has died, help me. They will come to me. Oh, so my dad and my mom now developed deep complications and they would go to very expensive hospitals for help, you know, had problems and all that, and the money was just going. Yeah. And then I started asking myself, what is happening? I, the man of God I had traveled again one day and I, I, take, I emailed him while he was on his trip and he told me the date he was coming, so I went to meet him in the airport. Ajome Kenyatta, I explained the case and he told me, I told you, now the decision is in, in your, your hands. hands. Yes. Yeah, make the choice. If you want to pursue those, you can continue. But uh, if you want to do the will of God, where your blessings are, come back home. And uh, I went, swallowed that, chewed it, uh, swallowed it, decided to wind up all my businesses. Actually, people thought I, was, I had gone crazy. People talked all kinds of things. Hey, this young man is mad. How can you wind up all those businesses like that? You are making lots of money. I had a butchery also. Was making lots of money. 
So they talked a lot of things to discourage me from doing that. But anyway, uh, after listening yeah, to the word of the man of God and seeing what had happened, I made up my mind to go back to Mombasa uh, so that I would be mentored uh, into what God wanted. So when I came back to Mombasa, I was close to the, the, the wife of the pastor mm -hmm. who took me around one, one day. Uh, she, she told me to accompany her to a mission at Mutongwe. Mm -hmm. Mutongwe <laughs> in, uh, somewhere in Mutongwe at a, a barracks. Mm -hmm. And she, when we went, she told me now, you are going to be the one ministering today. I was shocked, ministering me? I have never stood before people to minister now. How, how is this gonna happen? But she encouraged me and she told me, you are a great servant of God. You can do it. It's you, ma'am, mm -hmm. I'm yes, talking about. I know, I remember. If you can remember. Yes, I do. That <laughs> yes. one I do. Yes. I quickly went to the book of Daniel. I was able to share. Yes. And you really encouraged me. You yes. told me you did it well. And you know what that meant? Introduced you as a student minister. Yes. yes. And that has marked my ministry. So you <laughs> played an important role <laughs> by laying the foundation of my ministry. Amen. Amen. It gave me confidence to stand before people mm -hmm. and now to speak the word of God. And that is where it started. And the man of God introduced me to a group of prayer warriors. And uh, this group, uh, we used to pray for at least two, three days in a week, fasting mm. and praying for our ministries. Mm. And it really played an important role uh, in strengthening me now uh, spiritually. Mm. And I started growing slowly yes. by slowly. And the man of God gave me responsibilities at the church. And uh, it really helped me. Amen. It helped me to keep me on my toes, to seek the face of God and also to grow. Mm -hmm. And through that, uh, he also introduced a ministry, uh, M3 ministry. Mm -hmm. He introduced it to us later mm -hmm. in 2014. And uh, this is an American uh, ministry uh, which deals with discipleship. Yes. Uh, mentoring men for the master. Mm -hmm. uh, the servant of God came with that ministry, introduced it uh, to us, and we impressed. We were seven people, the prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we picked that ministry and we started. And uh, through that ministry, again, uh, my, uh, yeah, I continued growing mm. and uh, was being mentored through the ministry and through the, the input of the man of God and the responsibility he was giving unto me. He gave me the responsibility of being a youth pastor, the church, and he, uh, it really helped me a lot. Mm. And through that, I continued growing. But all this time around, I was still single. Yes, praise God for the testimony and for the fire that we have come. I was going to go to that part. Amen. Challenges of being a single pastor <laughs> and how did you overcome that until now you are Baba Kelly? Yes, <laughs> thank you, Reverend. Uh, well, uh, my love story also has uh, had its own challenges. As I told you, I, uh, previously I had had self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. And it, is, it has its own history, which I don't want to go into. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, well, I met this girl, uh, Amzungu girl. Mm. We interacted, we interacted, uh, but the relationship didn't work for some time, so I called it quits. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I called it quits, uh, I was, I think, desperate because I didn't seek the face of God so much before I made the second choice now to, to pick up uh, the replacement. Mm. Uh, there's this girl who was uh, staying around Mutwapa mm -hmm. and our studio, the church had a studio and I would go, every time I go to the studio I would find her in the, in the veranda there and she would greet me nicely, like showing some interest. Hallelujah, man so, of God. Yeah. <laughs> so every time, we, you know, slowly by slowly, <laughs> we started getting closer. Yeah. So uh, when I broke up with the girl, the, the girl from Scotland, I, I quickly made up my mind that I was going to pick that girl and move on. Mm. It, was the wrong, it was the worst decision that I had ever made in my life. It was the, because I never sought God on that same issue. Mm. I just rushed into making a decision to replace. It was a way of healing myself, but I, it was a very wrong move. Mm. And I would tell young people, never. Never. Yeah, you actually, you know, some people have said that uh, if you are in a relationship yes. for young people who are still, um, you know, in the process of trying to make a decision and, um, you know, you are having a relationship with somebody and then someone, um, you know, the relationship ends. 
whether good way or a bad way, it still, it still hurts. The end of one thing it, uh, got its own, own emotional things. Yes, yes. And um, some people, some young people have said, uh, you know, the way to get over a, a relationship or, you know, the girls have said to me, the way to get over a, a young man is to get another one very oh, fast yeah. so that, um, you know, the continuity of the, of the, of the feelings, you, you don't hurt so much. Mm. Does it work? No, 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 it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work and I'm a living testimony to that. Yes. Because I quickly rushed into a relationship to in the process of healing and because I really want, I was desperate to settle down mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up in a very deep hole. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this because uh, I had not known the girl better. Mm -hmm. I didn't know her, the girl so well. She was a rebound. Yes. They, calling it, yes, they yes, call yes. it a rebound. <laughs> exactly. You can say yes. that. That's a very good word to describe that. Yeah. So uh, I met that girl. Uh, okay, the girl at that moment had moved to Machakos. So we started, I quickly gave her a call and because she had shown a lot of interest previously, she quickly re uh, accepted uh, even without questions. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was a moment I needed to have raised my, uh, my antenna. That's a red flag. And, uh, yes, to find out why, why would she so, be so fast? Mm -hmm. But uh, she quickly came in. And then uh, we, I called her, I told her to come down to Mombasa and then I called my spiritual father and told him I have a, a girl. Mm -hmm. My dad, uh, my spiritual father was hesitant, but you know, he wanted to support me anyway. So he couldn't tell me, because stop. But uh, I, 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 he saw that I was so much interested into, I was so much interested into settling down. So he, anyway, he had to give me a go ahead. Mm -hmm. So we met the girl in Mombasa and uh, in a short span of time, things were moving so fast. Mm. Things were moving so fast, this girl was so fast. Mm. She quickly went back to Machakos and decided that she, she would no longer stay in Machakos. She wanted to come to Mutuapa. I had to start looking for a house. We are not married. Mm. She wants to get me to look for a house for, so that she can settle, which I did. And then she moved back to, to, to Mutuapa and mm. Mombasa and we started making arrangements. And I got a lot of support, yes, because from my spiritual parents. They really supported me. And uh, I really thank God for the support I got from them. Uh, they were willing even to sacrifice financially mm. just to see to it that I was uh, able to go through that, uh, the, the process that I so much wanted mm. <laughs> to see happen. Mm. Mm. But uh, as I had said earlier, I had not prayed mm. to ask God mm. the way forward. Mm. Uh, this girl, we went, we did all the introduction. She came from Nyeri. We, would tra we traveled to Nyeri. They my spiritual parents supported me. They even took me there. And uh, even we went and paid dowry. And, uh, but after paying the dowry and uh, coming back to continue with the wedding arrangements, things started happening mm -hmm. so fast. Mm -hmm. Things started happening. We started seeing some funny characters. Uh, she started portraying some very funny characters which uh, were raising eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Why would she be behaving like that? Uh, she would come to the church. I was uh, an, an altar person, you know, I, sometimes running the service, but she would come late and wearing a very scant, scantily, wearing scantily, <laughs> and uh, uh, she, I would feel so embarrassed. I would feel like, oh my God, now look, she has come. I would get so distracted. Mm -hmm. But it was already too late. I felt it was already too late for me to back off mm -hmm. and I continued. But in the process of planning, you know, things were, I would see very funny uh, behaviors and even uh, uh, people around the church environment would observe the same. And in fact, others would come and approach me and ask me, hey, we have seen this behavior, but uh, it's not like a normal one. What mm -hmm. is happening? And uh, I would try really to, I was struggling. I was really struggling. I was struggling to really uh, deal with that, mm. but uh, I didn't know how to actually deal with it fully. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the good thing is that uh, my, my spiritual parents observed the same, mm. and they even one day decided to take her to their home. Mm. And when they took her to their home, they even observed a worse scenario. The girl was so lost that she was so gone mentally that she would even, she would not differentiate between a toilet and a bathroom she would use so so that for the purposes of our viewers to yes, understand yes, yes. exactly the problem with this girl is that she was mentally disturbed not just disturbed she was she was actually she was mentally sick not so just, she was you know, like you a can, crazy you can, person. Yes, you like can be disturbed, person. but you're not. But she was mad, actually. Yeah, yeah that's the word. Yeah, uh, a that's mad person, yeah. She was. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, because a person who can exchange a toilet and a bathroom, yeah. use either, yeah. uh, use a, a, a bathroom, specifically a bathroom as a toilet, mm. and then that person is not normal. Mm. Yeah, mm. so that was what was uh, uh, coming out uh, as just one of the characters because she would also, she, was hallu she would hallucinate. Uh, it's kind of she was having delusions. She was kind of, you know, she would not uh, speak coherently. Mm. She would just stammer, like, you know. Mm. And uh, those were signs mm. that this girl was not normal. Mm. So we talked to the, my, by the help of my spiritual father, we talked to the father mm. of the girl. And the father responded in a funny way. We were shocked, actually, how he responded. He just said, put the girl on the bus and let her come. And we were shocked. A crazy girl like this one, a person who is mentally sick, mm. really seriously mentally sick, how can we put such a person on a bus? Mm. So he said, okay, don't worry, I will be there tomorrow morning. Mm. So he, he took a bus and came and we went for a meeting somewhere, we sat down and when we discussed that, he was actually, he, didn't, he never gave us an opportunity even to, to, to tell what we had seen or uh, we, to explain to express to him what we had observed. That was the reason why we called him. He just lectured us. He was lecturing us about uh, how we were stressing the girl, how we were using her in ministry to, uh, to distribute uh, flyers. That's why he was, she was uh, disturbed, you know. And we were surprised by how he behaved. Then he said, okay, I will go with the girl. And then when she's okay, uh, I will communicate so that she can come, you continue with the, the, with the plans. plans. Mm. So we, we didn't know, when they went, there was silence. And we didn't know how now, whether to continue with the plans or to freeze them. Every effort of communicating with them mm. to find out what was happening could not go through. I even tried to use the friend. I had a friend of hers who was working as a, a nurse in a hospital in Nyeri. We would try even to use the, the, that communication channel. And she told me, oh, that girl, if you have not been told, she's in a mental, uh, mental ward right now. She's completely crazy. She's lost it completely. That's why they don't want to communicate. Every time we would try to communicate, previously, communication was perfect. But this time around, we would try to communicate, and every time you call, oh, it's, there's no network, oh, hello, 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 we can't hear you. Mm. You know, the communication completely became distracted. So communication was cut. And uh, after a long time of effort of not being able to go through, mm. we decided to, I, I really decided to call it quits mm. because uh, the communication was not working. Mm. There was no proper communication. So I decided to call it quits mm. and uh, I decided to seek God again. Mm. I went back to the drawing board. Uh, I called it quits uh, with that first, uh, that relationship mm. with the girl. Though I had paid even dowry and all that had been done, the process was in advanced stage, mm. but uh, it was God who was revealing things to me mm. so that uh, he would uh, prepare me for a better, mm. a better future. Mm. So I went back to my prayers and uh, I prayed, I involved, I never walked alone this time around. Mm -hmm. I involved my spiritual leaders, mm. uh, especially my mom, my mm. spiritual mom who was very close to me. Mm. and She has always been very supportive. Mm. Uh, to my work mm. in this uh, in my ministry. She mm. supported me to help me to make the right choices mm. this time around mm. to seek God. She gave me the process of how I would seek God mm. and how I would uh, reach there where God wanted me to be. Mm. And through that, I got a new catch. Mm. <laughs> I, knew, I got a new catch this time around. It yes. worked. Yes. It by works. God's grace. Yes. It worked. Wow. And that this is the evidence. It yes. worked. Yes. 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 Wow, um, I would like us to address um, young people yes. who are in a relationship. Yes. Some people have gone, feel that, you know, I have gone too far into this, even though I can see the red flags, but I cannot turn back. The parents already know, you know, we have announced to our friends, what can I do? But also before that, where you are in the process now of being on the drawing board, of getting to choose a life partner, because it's somebody that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yes. I would like you to look at the camera and address such people. Uh, what are the pro what do you need to do? You've talked about seeking God. You've talked about seeking guidance from, you know, spiritual parents or people who are closer to you, people who have influence over you, things like that. Please look at the camera and talk to such people.
Thank you, uh, Reverend. I want to talk to you young people that uh, choosing a life partner is not a, a joke. It's something that you need to be very serious about uh, because a life partner means a person you are going to live with for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It is not something you can gamble with mm -hmm. because if you gamble, it will cost you. It is easier for you, it's better and easier for you to break a relationship than to break a marriage. Uh, so, uh, I would tell you young people, it is better for you to seek God and ask God. Ask God when you are about to settle down. Don't just rush because you have seen a beautiful girl, just because uh, you, you are attracted to the physical appearance or the outside appearance. Seek God first. Ask God, really. Is that uh, God's will over your life? Because uh, when you are making that choice, it's a lifetime jo choice. So it is good to involve God from the beginning. Many a times young people would wait until when they are in, the, in hot soup. That's when they start asking God, oh God, you have left me, you have left me. But at the moment when they needed to see God on the same, they never did. Mm -hmm. They never did. Now you start blaming God. Oh, God has left you. God uh, did not help you to choose the right person. When you are suffering in marriage, you start complaining that God has left you. The truth of the matter is, let us be cautious when we are choosing. Don't just be in a hurry. When, don't listen to people who are saying you are getting old. That is your life. It's not about whether you are getting old or what. Choosing a lifetime partner involve God. Let God help you to make the right choice. Because when God helps you to make the right choice, you'll never regret it. You better be late. Because for me, I got married uh, in my 30s. To many, that is very late. But I don't regret it right now because God helped me. I sought God this time round. I sought the, the views and the advice of a senior servants of God. I involved people and they helped me. They counseled me. They, they gave me direction where I was not going right. Uh, they corrected me. Sometimes, you know, correction is not something people love. Because when uh, you are going wrong, uh, correction, when you are corrected, you feel hurt. Mm -hmm. You feel like somebody is stepping on your feet. Mm -hmm. But uh, it helps at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I went through all this process. Mm -hmm. I was a servant of God, but I needed direction. I needed mm -hmm. to be helped. What about somebody who is not even a servant of God? You will need even more. Mm -hmm. You need more correction. You need to be rebuked. You need to be corrected. And uh, a relationship that will lead to marriage can never be s completely secret. It has mm -hmm. to be brought to the light mm -hmm. so that people will help you to assess and uh, tell you this one yes, this one no. Mm -hmm. But when you find that you want to do things in darkness, mm -hmm. you want to hide it, and then you reveal it at the end of the day, uh, you are headed to the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage young people, uh, if you are in a church, you, are, you, you, have, you feel like you have reached a point where you need to settle, involve your pastor, involve the elders, uh, people who are more mature, people who have been in marriage, who can advise you. People who can tell you this is the way. If you want to have a successful marriage, then look for this. And when you see red flags, it is never too late for you to call it quits, to call it. It's as I said earlier, it's better you break a relationship than to break a marriage. That's or right. cry for the rest of your life. Yes. Yeah. Or there are people. Depression. Yes. There are yeah. people who are in marriage and they are like in a prison. Oh yeah. They are asking the, they are, their prayer is when will this partner of mine die so that I will marry again? <laughs> <laughs> They are praying That's for their very death. serious, you know. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Mom, I am serious about yes, this. Yes, yes. Yeah, there are people who are praying for their partners to die. To die. So that they can be free again yes. and make the right choices. Yeah. Don't wait and start praying for your partner to die. Pray and ask God to help you to make the right choice. Amen to that. Let me um, talk a little bit to people. Young, old, it doesn't matter what stage of life you are at. But you are addicted to drugs, to alcohol, to sex, to pornography, to masturbation, to whatever addictions that you might be going through. Number one, the devil loves darkness. Secrets. He thrives very well in such. So one thing is avoid places. Avoid being the only one who knows about it. Exactly. Try and share with someone. And we can understand that maybe you are a church elder, maybe you are a church leader, maybe even you are a pastor, a bishop, an apostle, and you are addicted to something. People addicted to pornography, people addicted to, to, to sex, uh, Pastor Nicholas called the womanizers, and I, I don't know if they are menizers. Yeah, they're men, both, both, both. Womanizer, menizer, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yes. Try and share with somebody. 
go to someone that you can trust, somebody that you can call a father or a mother. Share with someone. Don't keep it to yourself. Because as long as you keep it to yourself, it will eat you slowly. And people will begin to see you, unaisha tu pole pole, pole pole, pole pole. Finally, the devil will just finish you. Because again, the plan of the devil is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So before you are completely destroyed, share with someone. Look for someone that you can trust. Share with them. And let try to get help along the journey. Again, sometimes what some of these addictions do, for example, if you are addicted to drugs, it is that you will try in many times not to be in company of people who you do not want to know that you are addicted. Okay. Try very much to be in that company. Try to be with people who bring positive um, attitude in you, people who bring positive energy to you. When you are with those people, they will influence you towards getting out of it. If Try to avoid places that trigger the addictions because normally it happens in the mind and then the body loses control. Exactly. Try to avoid places that, um, that trigger such addictions. If there are places that you go, maybe you inject yourself, maybe when you see naked women and that's how you become addicted to sex or whatever, try to avoid those places. Then the most important thing, pray to God. Amen. Because human beings will not help you. Amen. Only God will help you break that addiction. Amen. Because as long as you have that addiction, the devil has a hold against you. The devil has a legal ground. Just when you're happy and you're beginning to rise again, you're struggling to reach back to God, bring that connectivity, the devil comes and because he has that legal ground to fight against you, he stands before God with that accusation and you feel weak, you feel naked in front of people, you feel like a nobody. I encourage you to talk to somebody. There are services, counseling, professional Christian counselors, Christian um, counseling places that we can direct you to. Talk to us and we may lead you to somewhere where you can get help. Until next time, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you both now and forevermore. Bye-bye.